how uh, regions are going to benefit from Horizon 2020? Well, as we know, the regions in the European Union are very important and we want them to become innovative. We want them to be able to get great benefit from Horizon 2020. And Horizon 2020 has 80 billion euro um, <clears throat> as a budget. Um, what it wants to do and what we want to do with it is to turn the really excellent basic research that we do all the way across the innovation chain to um, uh, provide goods and services that people want to buy. Now regions get a lot of funding from the European structural um, and investment funds, or the, as we used to call them in the old days, the structural funds. And in, in order to qualify for the huge amount of money that is in those funds for research and innovation, each country needs to have smart specialization strategies. And regions need to identify within the country what their strengths are. To build on those strengths, then they need to be able to draw down the funding that contributes to developing that and creating um, an economy that is sustainable, making the regions uh, competitive, uh, growing the regions and subsequently creating jobs. Are there any special arrangements for, uh, for regions uh, of the South and Europe? Well, the, the arrangements for the, for the regions are the same arrangements all over Europe, but obviously in different regions of different countries, they are in different. They are sometimes in Objective One regions, for example, where they get a lot of uh, funding uh, from the structural funds. So, what we have done this time for the first time ever, if you're living in a region and you have a project that has got funding from Horizon 2020, you can also combine that funding with funding from the structural funds, from the cohesion funds, and that's really important because it enables you to do the two elements. It enables you to spend on a really good proposal for excellence in research and science, and at the same time it enables you to buy the equipment that you need to build a new lab, to refurbish a lab, whatever it might be. And this is the first time that we've been able to do this, the two funds working together on the same project. How would you encourage member states not to cut on their research budget? Well, we have a target in the European Union of 3%, an overall target for the Union as a whole. If we want to build what we call a sustainable economy, and Vice President Ren and I just this week, as you know, launched a communication on um, research and innovation as a motor for economic growth. If we want to create the competitiveness and the growth, I don't think that there is any uh, excuse for any member state not to invest in research and innovation. Now, I understand, I'm Irish, so I understand how difficult it is when the country is going through a long period of fiscal consolidation, like Greece is. But within the, the margins, within the elements of the budget, I think governments need to make wise choices, and that is that they have to invest in the areas that will create the growth. And growth is the biggest thing that Europe needs at the moment. Now, if we look at where we are on a global level, for example, we're behind the US, now, um, South Korea and China are investing far more in the, this whole area than the European Union is. So member states, it's a wake up call for member states. If we want to keep lagging behind and getting further and further behind, then we stop investment. But if we're really serious about creating a sustainable economy that will have highly skilled, highly qualified jobs that are sustainable into the future, then we need to really invest smartly in research and innovation. Which could be the benefits for Greece? Uh, if uh, we invest more on research and innovation? Well, I think there's tremendous benefit uh, for Greece because Greece does basic fundamental science really, really well. And there you have the most fantastic scientists and researchers in Greece. We need more of them getting involved with industry. This is where there is this gap in lots of countries in Europe, not just in Greece. It's bringing together the really good academic work that's done and getting academia to work with industry. And in particular, small and medium-sized companies, bringing them together, letting them see what the research results are and let them then market those results, commercial those, commercialize those results. You also see in Greece, everywhere I go in Europe and indeed outside of Europe, I find Greek researchers and scientists working in universities, working in companies and so on. So there's a huge market out there to bring those back. But in order to be able to bring them back, you have to create the climate within the country, you have to create a framework within the country that encourages them to come back. And that's where 
wisely and strategically investing in the strengths that Greece already has, whether it's in nanotechnology or in ICT or in agriculture or fisheries, whatever it might be, investing smartly in those areas will bring those people back and they're the people that will uh, you know, improve the economy and make the economy sustainable into the future. How, how the link between research and innovation is going to uh, be expressed in Horizon 2020? Well, the first thing that we did in 2010, we um, put forward a, a flagship initiative called Innovation Union. And that was all about taking the basic research that we do so well in Europe and helping it right along the innovation chain until it could be commercialized here. So what we looked at were all the obstacles that were there along the way. So the lack of a, a, a European patent, for example, was one of those. We now have a European uh, patent which needs to be implemented. The, so, the um, long time that it took to establish a European standard, so faster standardization, the lack of venture capital funding, um, uh, all of those elements within uh, Innovation Union were specifically there because I talked to industry and I said to industry, you know, what are the problems? What can we do as the regulator, the policy maker, to make this thing happen properly? And these are the, area, the areas that they set out as priority areas for them. So we've worked on that since 2010. Different colleagues of mine have worked in producing uh, the results for Innovation Union for the flagship initiative. And now we have uh, Horizon 2020 with 80 billion euro supporting all of that. So what I would say to um, uh, anybody uh, listening or watching, I would say, if you are in academia, you need to strengthen uh, cooperation with the private sector. If you're in the private sector, you need to do the opposite. You need to contact academia and both need to work together. And the countries that have done that have seen the benefits. And I suppose above all, during this really bad crisis that we have had in the European economy, the countries that have weathered the crisis best are also the countries that continued to invest strongly in research and innovation. Okay, one yeah. last question okay. now. Okay. Uh, if you would summarize in a, in a sentence, uh, which is the priority for the, uh, uh, the new research framework for research and innovation, uh, what would that sentence? The, the Horizon 2020 and the whole policy for research and innovation is about making the European economy, all of the member states' economies, competitive, making them grow, helping them to grow and supporting that growth, and delivering the jobs. Unemployment is the biggest uh, crisis that we have in Europe at the moment. We need to find jobs for people, for young people, for those who have left, uh, who have lost their jobs, we need to be able to support their retraining and all of that. So investment in research and innovation is going to create that climate that will encourage investment and thereby grow the economies.